I wanted to include uh, Francisco Tarrega's right hand exercises as part of the basic guitar uh, curriculum lessons uh, because I feel they're really important. They're really uh, good, uh, not just even for beginners. I find myself uh, that after, even though I've played and practiced classical guitar for over 30 years, uh, they're a very nice way to kind of reconnect uh, every once in a while, especially because I'm performing so much music all the time every week and different music every week. Uh, it's a really nice way to just kind of get reconnected to uh, the basics and simple things like just contact point with the string and, and also the positioning of my right hand. So they can do the same thing for uh, beginner level students or intermediate students. It's a really nice way to just to think about it, almost meditate on uh, r your right hand position and contact point, the, the way that the, uh, the, the fingertip and nail combination makes contact with the string. And uh, they just take you through each, each very short, simple exercise takes you through a number of these, these paces, if you will. So what I want you to notice when you practice them, and I will, and I will assign uh, from time to time, uh, I will assign some of these exercises uh, to a specific uh, student, to you, the, uh, the individual student, uh, depending on what I, I think needs maybe work. And they can be good for something like that, a very quick exercise and then maybe a more complex exercise and then maybe even an etude to help supplement something that uh, needs work in your right hand technique. But, what I, but for any of you that, do, that, uh, that uh, choose to work on these, uh, I want you to notice <clears throat> the the kinesthetic physical sensation of say the difference between uh, the right hand fingerings between uh, number five and number six for example. Uh, number five we have very simple I am, I am fingering over the third and second string. So you're alternating third and second string I am, I am which would be you know generally the fingering you would choose in, in, in a particular texture like this. So you have, right? And then the difference between that and in six, this is very unusual. Taraga uh, is often flipping those fingerings around so that you are deliberately playing what we would think of as a wrong fingering, uh, what I call backward string crossing, where you're going from a lower string with M to a higher string with I in number six. So the fingerings are reversed in the right hand, like this. <clears throat> and I want you to notice, and everybody's right hand is different. And so that, that backwards string crossing is gonna feel different uh, for, for each individual hand. And so what I want you, the individual student, uh, to, um, to, to notice or feel is that subtle mix of hand arm movement, maybe for number six, where you wouldn't need to involve the hand or the arm in number five, because you can kind of set your right hand position in number five and just swing away. I am, I am, I am. But am I, there's, there's a lot of options uh, you know, that, uh, that get you to play it most easily, including arm movement, forward, backward, Right? So this I'm doing a very deliberate arm movement forward backward, which in, in, in some schools is a big no-no, but if I, was, if I had to play a fingering like this, I might investigate how much of that I might use while still keeping the, the hand at, a, at my suggested 45 degree angle for most of your playing, or just turning the wrist down a little bit, which I use to get a brighter sound or more thinner sound, and then you don't have to use as much arm movement. You can really leave, you can, you can delegate that work to the individual fingers like this. Kind of the Segovia hand position, this kind of thing where the wrist is kind of cranked or turned, turned down a little bit. With Segovia, who wasn't actually, I don't think he was really, uh, really having to crank it down. It just was a very natural hand position for him. Um, 
most players, most concert players today adopt uh, something a little bit more of an angle to the string in order to achieve a, 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 a sound that on most guitars uh, will provide a, a good balance between clarity and warmth uh, and projection as well. So with that, between those two polarities, you can really you know, experiment with that and, and to, to just get the, exactly the right mix for your hand and for your tone. Um, and also, um, you should practice each of these with sequential plant and legato. So I'll demonstrate that with, um, with number one, for example. So M I M I, coming from a lower string to a higher string for the G and then the B. We have, so sequential plant would end up looking and sounding like this. And then, you know, play about anywhere from two to four repetitions of each uh, of each exercise. Take a break, and then uh, play the same thing legato. That. So I recommend both of those, and you want to try to keep the bass legato uh, at all times, even during the sequential plant. So if I'm playing sequential plant here, I'm preparing in advance with the M and I, but not with the P, not with the thumb. So. Rather than this. that's not a bad thing to practice. Uh, generally, you want to try to keep the bass legato at all times. So there you have it. That's my intro uh, introduction, just things to, to listen for, uh, to, to watch for. But really, this is the target right hand exercises are a great way to get kinesthetically uh, connected uh, to your right hand positioning, your right hand mechanics, and the contact point, the fingertips uh, making contact with the string.